Hello, my friends. Welcome back to another episode of MTD CNC North America. I'm very glad you have joined us today. I am with my buddy Bruce. We are at Precision Products. We're in Indiana. We're standing in front of this beautiful Matt Sura machine that's only a couple of months old. And we're going to discuss how this machine has helped him reduce 58% of overall cycle time by kind of combining it into one operation. How the pallet change system has helped him keep that uptime going 24 hours a day and how this realization of this incredible machine has helped him become inspired to go to an even bigger model in the MAM with 320 and sometimes even more pallets to run through the weekend the entire time. So Bruce, thank you so much for being a part of MTD CNC. No, I'm glad you're here, thank you. Absolutely, thank you for having me, first of all. So let's jump right into it, my friend. This okay. machine's about two months old. Right. And what were some of the changes you've made from EDM and some of the other great machines you have here that you've now utilized in this Matsura machine? Well, the main thing we're trying to do is obviously reduce labor and reduce touches to the part. So we've actually, some class of parts, we've actually really remanufactured how we go about making that part. So we've replaced EDM with milling uh, because it can be done through the palletization. So we've actually taken big steps out of the process by just processing in a new way. And by doing that, you, you've moved it all to one process, it's palletized, that's where the huge gains are in your uh, reduction of your cycle time. So we're very excited. So, so far it's only two months in, but it's how quick can I get a man? That's, that's the only question I have. In the past, so we've been doing for probably 20 plus years is, you know, traditionally where I would turn it, then mill it close enough, harden it, then EDM it, then polish it, and then grind it to have a finished part. Well, with the precision of the Matsura and its repeatability, uh, we don't do any more EDM. It's, we just turn it, mill it, harden it, and grind it and it's a finished part. So we've completely eliminated the EDM process, which is really huge. Um, you've taken all the electrode making out, the burn time, which is slow, eliminated polish 100% due to the precision of the surface finish, it, you don't need to polish it. So it's just been phenomenal, just, just one family of parts. So it's really been a major leap forward in our process. So. And let's talk a little bit about that polish process. When we're talking about the polish process, there are machines out there that can do that, but for the most part, you have some high quality people here that have been here over two decades that can do that kind of a thing. But right. we're talking about removing the possibility of human error, right? Which even as perfect as some of us might be, right. we're okay. still gonna make mistakes from, some t from time to time. Right, there's nothing more repeatable than a machine tool. A person is not nearly as repeatable. So I have guys who've been doing it for 20 years. Uh, sometimes they don't show up to work. Sometimes they're sick. They have a good day, bad day. Um, typically, you know, we, we have the same guys doing it. When they're polishing it, typically you make a part more inaccurate. You don't make it more accurate, typically. So if I can eliminate him touching, we call them touches to the part. If I can eliminate touches, that's always a good thing because of the human factor. We're all human. We all do it. Um, but I've eliminated that risk. And risk management is a big part of it. Is if it goes in the machine, it's going to come out right, or it's not going to come out at all. So it really takes a lot of the sleepless nights out of running a business, So, in my opinion. So I think it's just fantastic. So. You've never had a sleepless night, have you? Uh, occasionally. <laughs> I, I believe you. I have as well. Yeah. So understanding what you're machining here, the, the average cycle time, at least for this part, is about an hour and a half, if I remember that correctly, right? Right. So right. if we're talking an hour and a half, and we multiply that by the amount of pallets we have in here, we can run through the night. Yes. However, you are now thinking about moving into the MAM size with much more pallets because you want to run 24-7 even through the weekend without anyone having to come in and make changes. And you're, everyone's goal now is that uptime, right? To utilize right. all the hours that are in your day. And that's kind of your plan. Yeah, this being, you know, even though it's a complex machine, it's what Matsura would consider an entry level. And when you go to the MAM, it's pretty mechanically slightly different, but you have 32 or maybe 40 pallets. So when I look at the two machines, it's like I have my week machine, I have my weekend machine. So I'm just going to take it to the next level. Um, fewer people can run more machines. So it's just amping it up, you know, just to the next level, which is real exciting. So we're not really 
trying to figure it out. We're just, we're just, we're just doing more of the same. So, and pretty excited about it. It's not really if, it's just when. It's very important for you and the Precision right. Products family as a whole to take care of those around you and all the customers you work with. Yeah, most of our customers we've had for 30, 35 years. Um, and I want my customers to know, if, to know if they have a problem, they need to come to me and I'll do everything I can to help them with their problem. It's called trying to reduce their pain. We all have pains, right? So how can I let them know that I'm here to help you get past the problem, to avoid problems? Um, so we always try to, I try to sell the service side. And now, you know, with a tool like the Matsura, that just helps me do that job more easily and more effectively and more profitably overall, which is key. Um, so, and when my customers tour, they see this machine, most of them have never seen one before, but the ones that know what it is are, it's an instant checkbox in their brain. It's like, they know what's going on. So, it's a great tool for me to show them what kind of equipment I have uh, to build their confidence in me. So, it's, it's been a great sales tool for us as well. So. And speaking of having that confidence in the machine itself, Yamazin has been of great service and support to, your, to you and your team. How right. quickly do you think your teammates were able to adapt to a new machine coming in and in kind of a new way of thinking about making products? Yeah, I, I'm a firm believer on uh, not just buying a machine, but try to get the employee buy-in. So I've been looking at, at this particular machine. We've had another Matsura for several years, but this machine in our milling area is, you know, trying to sell them on the idea of, you know, as soon as you say 10 pallets, it scares people. Five axes scares people. Put them together, it really scares people, right? So I said, think of it as a three axis mill with 10 tables and start slowly and just, just ease into it. Don't, don't try to eat the whole elephant in one bite. So, so with Yamazin, you know, we've had a relationship for 25 years with them. So we trust them from the get go. They represent Matt Sura. So as soon as they walk in the door and they say, I represent Matt Sura, I said, let's see it. So there's not a trust or is it a quality machine? I know it is. And that's how Yamas and how they roll. So, and with the employees, I kind of, you know, show them what I'm thinking about doing. I'm going to try and make your life easier here at the shop. You don't work harder, work smarter. Got to work smarter, you got to have a better tool, machine tool, better processes. Um, and that's how we all get paid more money at the end of the day. And that's all why we work. So, uh, and Yamas is always there for the support. Um, really, once the machine was installed, and trained on it, we almost can teach ourselves. It's a fanic based control. We have many fanics in here. And, uh, you know, it becomes fun, it becomes exciting. And then the employees, once you get that buy in, they really, they're really pushing me how quick can we get another one? How quick can we get another one? So, and that's when, and that's where you need to get to. You need to get the employee buy in. And, and the Amazon helps us do that. And so does Matt Stewart, so. And, and what did you tell me before that sales will sell the first one? The salesperson will sell the first one, in our case, Yamazin. The machine and the support will sell the second one and the third one and the fourth one. So the salesman can kind of just step away at that point, but because the service and support is, you know, to me, service and support is number one. The price of the machine, it's not a cheap machine, but, but look at what you get, you know. The value, you have to look at the value. So, and with Yamazin, we had experience with that, no problem with them. Uh, and Matsura, you know, um, they've just been top-notch through the whole process, so no complaints. Well, you mentioned, and I'm going to reiterate from the beginning of the conversation, you mentioned to me that by combining operations, you were able to reduce overall times of this part by 58%, right? Right. But also on top of that, you've had the opportunity because Precision Products isn't one of those places that's going to make a million parts. You would more or less be classified a job shop. You maybe do yes. one off, but right. also you have some parts that are a couple of hundred. But that being said, something like this Matt Sir has helped you. When a hot job comes in, you can finish running that job, load up the job here in the pallet change, push it right in ahead of something else, knock it out, and reduce that lead time for your customer, right. which I know is important to you. Yeah, it's the mindset that this is just a, a vertical mill with ten tables. So. You know, I mean, that's kind of simplistic, and it's much more than that. But if you think about it that way, I, it's like I have, I'm setting my next job up, and when that customer calls, when they call every morning with an emergency, because my press is down, you can react to that and not really, 
don't have to reset up, don't have to tear down. You're just moving to a different pallet. It takes 15, 20 seconds. Your tools are loaded because you have a massive tool changer. Your program's already in there. You know, so I can go from part A to part B in minutes and not really cost myself any pain having to go back to the regular production part. So you can react much faster and more effectively by having, you know, if you use it in that way. Um, and again, we don't do production. It's, it's low batch, high mix, family of parts, and it's just, a, it's just a perfect fit for us. So, you know, this one machine can eat the work of three or four standard machines because your spindle only run, is stopped running when you're doing a tool change or a pallet change. Other than that, it's cutting metal. That's your only, only restriction. So um, it's, it's, it's amazing how much work it can eat. And you really think, uh-oh, I need to get another lathe to be able to feed it, or whatever you need to be able to be able to feed parts to this machine if you have to do stuff ahead of time. So it's a little bit of an eye-opener, but it really is its a good thing in a way because it's reduced cycle time. The palletization, when you start running 10 or 20 or 40 of a part, you know, that's just the bonus. The parts are going to run faster, more accurately, but the palletization, that's your bonus, you know, if you look at it that way. And I, no labor. So um, it's, a, it's a home run. I mean, it's, there's really no downside that I can see. And something else I want to touch on quickly, it's kind of redundant at this point uh, based on everything we've described of reducing uh, different steps of the process, including the finishing. But when you put that first part on here and you come in the next day and you, whatever it might be, five, ten parts later, you really have no question about the accuracy of that 10th part or that 20th right. part because the precision is repeatable all the time on this Matsura. It's, as you say, there's no sleepless nights, right? Right. I mean, we have other machine tools that, you know, you t check your tool, the, the presetter that's built in. We check the part before the cut. I'm sorry, check the tool before the cut. We check the tool after the cut. So if you have a bad cut, chip cutter or whatever, which happens, dull cutter, you know it on that one part. And it can put that part away and change to the backup tool and get a different part and cut another part. So it can kind of work around its own problems on occasion with the redundant tooling, tool load monitoring. All that's built in because they know that's a thing, right? So, you know, Matsura's already figured out everything you don't know yet. <laughs> they know where you're going to have issues. It's all in there. There's no an option or a different feature. It's here's everything you need to be successful because we've done this for a long time. And that's, that's, I think, really important and impressive for me is, we, like I say, we just don't know some of the features that are in here yet, but we're going to learn them. So. Well, and you mentioned to me before something about a 20% a reduction in machine time just based on understanding the machine software itself, right? Right. Want to explain a little bit about how exactly that worked? Yeah, for this particular part, we would, in our post-processor, uh, we post the code, uh, we put it in the machine, we ran the part. So that was that, that 40 some percent of reduction in cycle time. Then we, we got to looking at the machine a little closer and then there's a call it dy dynamic control, which allows you to set accuracy and, and lets you tune the cut. So you just go to a page, you, you change your parameters, accuracy, speed, finish, and you can tweak your cut. So once we activated, we had to alter our post processor, which was pretty easy, and to put additional code in the program to turn that feature on. And that reduced that cycle time by another 20%. By just using that Matsura feature, we were flabbergasted. It was like, wow, what else is in there? Now we're digging for stuff, you know, so it makes it fun. It's like, there's gold in there, you just gotta go find it. So that was pretty cool. And, and we know we can go faster. We just haven't got there yet, so. And I've heard you, I know you've heard this statement, we don't know what we don't know, right? Right, right, I, I'm, I'm pretty ignorant to what I don't know, and that's, <laughs> but you have to go look to see and all those things, so. You have to go ask the questions. But, you know, with Yamas and Matsura, it's like, I want to be able to do this. Can I do that? The answer is probably going to be yes. Uh, if not, you'll get them to think about it. And maybe that's something that can be added or something, you know, a new feature in the future. But, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty exciting. It's pretty much it's fun when you really know you can do better. It's just how do I do it? So. And I know you're an outside-of-the-box creative thinker. You've mentioned this to me before, but I think it's important to convey to the audience listening right now. Because you are so creative, and your parts around here, there's so many different types, right? You mentioned lots of smaller batches and you're trying to change out all the time. Matt, sir, also supports you in a way you go, I think we can do this. Can you prove this out in your facility? You can give them a call right now. They'll go, right. yep, that works. And they'll give you a call back and say, go ahead and run it. They've supported you in that way as well. 
Yeah, it, it's it, with the dynamic control. We were, were a little not sure how to get that to work, and we called them and said, "Hey, we, you know, how do we make that work?" Said, well, you need to put the correct code in the program. So we posted it in our uh, computer, and we sent them the code. They ran it in St. Paul. It says it's good, but change this and this. So then we changed our post, so now we're able to produce a code ourselves. But they'll dry run programs for us on the exact same machine, and you know that's as good as it gets. They say run that, you'll like it. So. That's, that's pretty cool, in a matter of hours. Not days or weeks, hours. So that's pretty cool. I like that you said hours and not days or weeks because yeah. that's significant, right? One of the biggest right. stresses we can have is when the machine spindle's not turning, you right. know? That, yeah. That's the downtime that we need. Right, you know, we're not, we're a medium-sized shop, but, you know, hours are hours, you know? And how can I get that result? It goes back to the service and the support. They know if my machine's not running, I'm not as happy as I could be if my machine was running. So they, they're key on that. So it's uh, so far it's worked out well. So.